So in the previous video, we had uh, demonstrated with, uh, when using the Logit model, uh, one of the uh, features that's very attractive here is that the predicted probabilities are bounded by 1 and 0, and the Logit model seems to respect that. Uh, we had worked out these this logit output using a user-defined function developed by Loeffler and Posh. Uh, that VBA code is available in their textbook. I leave a link below. Uh, but we can verify these results using our studio. Uh, so I'll go back using the same data set. I'll go to our studio and um, I'll come down and I will run. We had, so far we had estimated the uh, OLS model and we had output here and now I will estimate the logit model using this glm command and then the link is logit and then uh, we we'll get the full output by summary uh, using the name of the model. Okay, so logit uh, and then summary and we get this output. So let's just copy the coefficients. Copy our output, go back into Excel and just verify that the results that we obtained are equivalent to what we had observed before. So I can just paste over what I had here and then shift this to the left and then compare the output that I have here, so negative 2.543, uh, working capital total assets, uh, 414, uh, retail earnings to total assets is negative 1.454, uh, negative 799, 799, negative 1.5936. So these results would appear at first glance consistent. The um, t values, the z values, t values, because we have so many coefficients here, our t values and z values would converge. But the t value uh, 9.56, 726 2.96, 4.93, and 171775. Those values uh, look uh, consistent. Okay, so we verified results then using the logit function developed by Loeffler and Posh, and we verified those results in our studio. And we can see uh, from our model then that these are the predictions. One of the nice things we could do here is we could compare the actual per true outcomes against the uh, probabilities here. Oh, so one way we might develop this is just to, okay, let's go with insert, insert, uh, scatter graph, and then right click, select data, add uh, actual, Uh, y defaults and on the x-axis now we could look at the t values here to look at the most statistically significant that would be uh, retained earnings over total assets okay so let's try that one retained earnings over total assets so as an x-axis we'll take retained earnings And we go down to 4,100. And then on our y-axis, we can go down. These are true values. And also go down to 4,001. And let's just see, does that actually work? And we get some. We don't get enough. Let's just edit, select data again highlight actual defaults okay so it should be 4001 doesn't seem to work on first attempt 4001 now let's try that and okay okay and so we get the actual so there were if we recall 
using our output from R when we ran the table, table Y, there was 3,928 zeros and 72 ones. Okay, so we have 72 ones predominant most of the time we're here. Uh, we have some values here, retained earnings to total assets. So, um, okay, let's select data and edit. So the y values the x values are we're taking the retained earnings over total assets okay let's uh now add a new series predicted predicted probability of default probability of default probability and on our x-axis, again, we're going to take the one with the most statistically significant. So the retained earnings over total assets. Okay, retained earnings over total assets. And we go down to 4,100, 4,001. And then on the y-axis, we'll take equal to these range of values here. And again, 4,100, 4,001. Let's run that and let's just inspect and we have to do it one more time. Uh, predicted probability added and just make for whatever reason we seem to have to put this in twice always 4100 and here 4100 run again and let's inspect. Okay, so we do see a trend here that as the retained earnings, and if we look at this, uh, retained earnings, the total assets are compared against uh, actual default probabilities. Yes, we observe that as the retained earnings, the total assets declines, uh, we observe in those instances that the value of the the value of the predicted prob probability increases. So as the retained earnings, the total assets declines, we do see a negative relationship. Now we could put in, let's just put in a polynomial. So add trend line and put in a polynomial, add trend line. And we could look at a polynomial here and just increase something like that perhaps and we can see a pattern emerge maybe we should go back to tree okay and um, do we need an intercept uh, display equation on chart okay so maybe we have something like that right that may be of interest to us right uh, it's gone uh, we perhaps don't want to do that either right but uh, we could look at this type of analysis, right? Do we see a pattern? There does seem to be a negative pattern here between the retained earnings to total assets that's borne out by the logit uh, values. Uh, it's not essential. We might just delete that out and get rid of that polynomial representation here. But the, the overall trend would appear to be pretty much that there is a negative relationship between retained earnings to total assets relative to the probability predicting uh, a one which is a risk of uh, is a, a higher probability of default uh, the numbers here are quite small relative to the overall numbers so uh, what's in red here is the predicted probabilities and then what's on the horizontal axis is the retained earnings to total assets